What's up guys, back with a new vid. And guys, today I'm gonna be talking about the inconsistencies of the Last of Us game that the show had perfected. But before we get into this guys, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe. And with that being said, let's hop right into it. So guys, I am honestly, like I said, going to be talking about how the game had many inconsistencies that the show has fixed. For instance, I know the game is just a game, but when you're in an instance of doing nothing random, enemies would pop out and I guess to extend the game's length, but in the show, it skips over a lot of these scenes and gets more straight to the point. And if you think about when 60% of the population is infected and the game takes place in the year 2033, let's say no one really had children because it'd be very dangerous. So we have to use the population from the year 2013 which is 7.2 million, so to track that by 60%, you get 290 million and 23,735. And this is in the world, and the game takes place in America. And I'm guessing a lot of people from other countries didn't really cross to a different country because they'll probably die trying because they probably tried to cross the country when the pandemic first began, so they probably got infected or killed, so that's out of the equation. Plus, since the game takes place in America, it's way fewer people compared to 290 million, and this was account for infected and not people killed by each other. Plus, it would be pretty hard to get a count of who's infected, counting on the fact that the world is in shambles. So, to me, it would be pretty rare to run into all the enemies we fight. So, I like how the show fix this inconsistency. The next inconsistency I would like to talk about that the show fix is the looting and crafting. Obviously, these are game aspects to make the game a game, but I do and don't at the same time. Like, I do like that they didn't bother scouring every room for loot in the show, and I get in a game this is optional, but you may be low on materials later in the games, but the show kind of only looted when needed, because realistically, you wouldn't find screws to upgrade your guns, you wouldn't find pills to upgrade yourself, but the show could have added finding random pills to save for if Joe and Ellie got sick, but again, not very necessary. And the crafting, the show didn't use crafting, but realistically, you wouldn't craft a med kit for a gunshot wound, nor could you make a nail bomb out of a can and blow half a dude's body off, but you would craft like a campfire or a shank. Another inconsistency is carrying 200 pounds worth of stuff on you. I get it's a game, but for Joel to carry every single gun he finds, which weighs a lot, would be crazy. Next one is at the beginning of the story when Joel and Tess escape from Fedra with Ellie. When the soldier stops them and Ellie stabs him and Joel kills a guy, in the show he takes his rifle, but in the game he just keeps his pistol. And that's something I'm happy they did because if you're going to smuggle a girl and get chased by the military, having a rifle is so much better. But again, I guess in the game, he didn't really bother doing this because they only had to meet from point A to point B until the objective changed to go all the way half across the country. So I guess this makes sense in the game, but at the same time, the show still did fix this. Next one is Fedra killing the fireflies rather than infected because it makes no sense for Fedra to be outside the Boston QZ where there's a lot of infected. So I like how in the show, the infected were the ones to kill the firefly soldiers and one of the biggest inconsistencies the show got right is shooting although in the show they run into a few enemies in the game when you shoot gunshots are loud and it would cause the people from the group you're shooting at to come after you and if joe and ellie are cornered by 20 or so people you can't just shoot them all and expect not to make it out alive without more people hearing the gunshots and coming after you next one Hearing Sam being hunted and gave them a storyline, the game never really answered as to why they were trying to escape the city, except for the fact that it was just a lot of Fedra and all that stuff. Next is Joe and Ellie running into people. Although in reality, they probably wouldn't run into that many people because most of the population is dead, but in a show, Joe and Ellie stumbled upon an old couple who are actually nice and pose no threat. And it shows you can still be out in the wild living in a cabin, hunting your own food and live sort of peacefully because this helps remember that the cordyceps is just a virus and not the end of the world. When Ellie runs away into the little house reading the book, telling Joe, is this all girls in your time had to worry about? We do see this heartbreaking scene of 
Ellie telling Joel everyone she's cared about has died or left her. The show fixed this by not having a random sequence of raiders come out of nowhere to this house and you have to kill them after Ellie tells this to Joel. And finally, I want to talk about Joel being penetrated. In the game, Joel falls onto a pipe that goes through his body, much like what happens to Laura Croft at the beginning of Tomb Raider. But this happening to Joel and him being an old man, most likely in reality, if you were penetrated in your hip, you would die. I know you can survive this because the same thing happened in the Telltale Batman game, but at the same time, it's Batman, of course he walks it off. But in the show, it showed a hunter who was acted by Troy Baker, who was also the voice and motion capture for Joel, stabbing Joel with a knife with Joel killing him at the same time, it just makes more sense for Joel and Ellie to escape the building and for Joel to get stabbed. Honorable mention, but not necessarily an inconsistency, but I just liked how the show showed more of Joel and Tess being a couple, cause I mean, in the game, Tess dies, doesn't seem like Joel really cares, he just moves on super fast, but at the same time, in a world like this, you do gotta move on super fast, you can't like hesitate. But I do like how the show kind of fixed this or, you know, made it better, I guess. Also, I like how the show really brought this game to life, just like by giving Sarah more of a backstory and just seeing Joel kill everyone in the Firefly Hospital to save Ellie. And when you think about it, Joel was a bit less cruel in the show compared to the game. But the game really brought to life how cruel Joel could be when we see him show no mercy to that one guy who was begging for his life and how Joel tells Ellie to go behind the wall and turn around. He doesn't believe a kid should see him kill a man who is also showing mercy. All right, guys, with that being said, for inconsistencies as the show got right that you like to add, comment them down below. I'll be sure to read them. With that being said, like and sub. Thanks for watching.